Hey guys and welcome back to another opening video. Today we'll look at the Ponziani, an offbeat opening try against 1e5 and it's very popular at the club and tournament level. I'm going to recommend to you a very sharp and tactical response with the black side and it's going to lead to some very interesting variations. So I hope you enjoy this video and I'll see you in a few seconds. So this opening starts out after 1e4e5. Knight f3, knight c6, and white plays pawn to c3, looking to get two pawns into the center. And here I'm going to recommend the most aggressive response for black, which is the move pawn to d5, hitting out immediately in the center. Here white has three main responses we'll look at one by one, starting with the move pawn takes on d5. So this one is probably the least dangerous of the options because black can just recapture back on d5. And the idea is similar to c3 Sicilian in that the knight doesn't have the c3 square to kick out queen. White will continue the move pawn to d4 here. And in this position, you can transpose back to another line which can also arise from a Danish after the move pawn takes d4, pawn takes on d4, and black can continue the move bishop to g4, bishop e2. So we can't capture on f3 because there will be a tactic with bishop takes c6 afterwards. So instead, black should play the move bishop to b4 check. And after knight c3, there's a very solid line here for black, which continues pawn, uh, bishop takes on f3, bishop takes and queen to c4, just preventing white from casting to the king side. And we're also preparing to castle queen side and threats of taking on c3 and queen takes d4. I've always found this line very, very solid for black and quite annoying to deal with um, from the white side. So this is a very good option. But... Because of this particular move order, I decided maybe we can try and take advantage of it a bit more. And I'm actually going to recommend the move bishop to g4 instead. And after bishop to e2, the idea is to just put immediate pressure with the move castles queenside. And here white has a few options. For example, h3 is met by bishop h5. Other options such as... Bishop to e3 can be met by either knight to e7 or even the move pawn to f5 here for black is very, very um, interesting. Also, if white tries to capture, then black can just capture the queens and then play the move knight takes on e5. And we see white's main problem here is that he can't capture an e5 because of the rook um, back rank threats. And also the knight is looking to head in towards the d3 square next. If knight d2, knight d3 is already a winning advantage um, for black. The second response white can choose in this position is to play the move bishop to b5, which is worked out to be very, very good for black, but you do need to know what you're doing. And it starts out with the move pawn takes e4, knight takes e5, and you should play the move queen to g5 here, hitting the pawn on g2, the knight, and also eyeing the bishop. From here on, white only has a number of responses, starting with the move knight takes c6, which is well met by queen takes b5. Here I believe black is already doing really, really well because we have the bishop pair and white is struggling to castle and develop on the queen side. If instead white opts for the move queen to a4, which is counterattacking the knight on c6, well, we can play the move queen takes g2 here, hitting the rook on h1. And if white tries bishop takes, pawn takes, and then queen takes c6, we can just sidestep everything with the move king to d8. The idea is that after rook f1, we can play the move bishop to h3, which is very, very important. Also, don't mind the knight check on um, f7, because we can always move the king to e7 and f6 if we uh, require to. But here we're giving up the rook on a8 with check. And it's totally fine. For example, after queen takes rook, we just play king e7. And white's already starting to run out of checks. If the knight checks on c6, well, we can just move the king up the board again. And eventually white will run out of checks. And there's no way for him to uh, defend the rook on f1. Where black will get a very dangerous counterattack. The other option white can play here is to first go bishop takes c6. And after pawn takes c6, then go queen to a4. So there's very little difference here because the position will often transpose anyway. 
but we start with the move queen takes g2 of course queen takes c6 and then again king to d8 here for example if white tries to move king to d1 you do need to be very very accurate though after queen takes h1 king goes across then we should play the move queen takes on h2 hitting the knight and also defending the pawn on c7 but in the process we're also giving up our rook so for example here king goes to e7 knight takes rook and then you play the very very accurate move bishop to f5 so we're just sacrificing that rook in the corner again to get a very dangerous counter attack after queen takes rook we play the move queen takes f2 and despite being a whole rook down in this position we have a very very dangerous counter attack and as far as i know um, it's very difficult for white here to stop the pass pawn from promoting or running his king into a very dangerous attack on the queen side so instead of all of these options white can opt for the move pawn to d4 as well hitting the queen and defending the knight very sensible move and after this we again we take the pawn rook to f1 and here we can start with the move bishop to d6 since bishop h3 is not yet really a threat if white tries to take on c6 with the knight then we can just play the move bishop to d7 a nice in-between move pinning the knight and we will win the piece back but we don't want to give any um, concessions towards our king after the knight takes a7 trying to defend the bishop we can just follow up with pawn to c6 creating a double threat here of attacking the bishop and the knight so we will win the piece back but the problem with white's position is that where is he going to put the king he can't really go queen side he can't go in the center and he can't go king side either whereas black has a very simple plan of developing castling king side and continuing his attack so lastly we come to what i believe to be the best response for white which is queen to a4 after this i suggest we play pawn to f6 just defending our pawn but because of this move we're going to end up having to castle queen side and we're going to develop our pieces in this manner knight goes to e7 let's say white takes the pawn on d5 then we will recapture here with the queen and here for example if white plays castles then we get to some very interesting variations you have many options here but i'm suggesting the move bishop to d7 which is probably the simplest just to unpin and take away some of that pressure after the pawn goes to d4 hitting our center then we have a number of options here with black for example one option could be to take on d4 let's say rook d1 maybe castle queen side here and one game has continued pawn takes black has played queen h5 in order to free up the square on d5 for his knight and then play the move knight to d5 maybe the knight is coming back to b6 but the idea is just to stop the white pawn from pushing which is very very important when you're playing against isolated queen's pawn so this is just another option another one is to play pawn to a6 after this white can play the move pawn to c4 and i found this variation very very interesting when i was looking at it because here black can play the move queen to f7 i was wondering what does black do after the move pawn to d5 because it doesn't particularly look very good for us like we can't take the bishop because of the pin we can't take the pawn moving the knight backwards doesn't look right at all but in fact in this particular case black has a very very interesting move and that's the move rook to a7 which when i first saw it looked a bit strange but the idea is that we protect the rook so we're actually threatening to take the bishop next move which forces white to take here and then we take back with the pawn and the idea is that we're just going to win the bishop back and gain the bishop pair and because of the pressure which has been released in the center we maintain a very strong pawn chain here and eventually we'll get castled and we should have a better position if white captures on a6 then we can play this very nice move bishop to c8 and win back the piece and here again we have the double pawns but we have the bishop pair and eventually we will get castled there's virtually no way for white to really stop that and once we do um, and bring our pieces into the game we should have a very comfortable position and if instead of d5 here white opts for something such as captures 
Um, there's also some very interesting variations here after rook to d8. Bishop takes, bishop takes, queen to b3, black can even play knight f5. And I found this position very, very interesting because black can capture back with the pawn and then play rook g8. And despite the fact that our king is stuck in the center, um, the games played and also computer evaluation seem to suggest that black is doing totally fine here. It could be for the fact that it's very easy for black to artificially castle. We can just play king d7, king c8, and the opening of the g file, the bishop pair, and open lines for our pieces give black a very dangerous initiative here in the middle game. So if we go back to move 6 now, instead if white tries to move pawn to d4, then again we have quite a number of options. Um, I'll show you a few. Uh, one is e4. So after e4, uh, black has scored very very well here. The game could continue pawn to c4. Black could play the move queen to h5. For example, the knight goes back to g1. We can play the move pawn to a6. And here again, there are some very interesting options for white. One could be bishop to e3, and the game might continue bishop g4, d5, trying to win the knight. And black can play this very interesting castle's queen side. And here we see that white can't capture the knight because of the checkmating threat on the back rank, which would pick up the queen. Instead, if white goes for this sacrifice on a6, where we can capture back, and after queen takes a6, king d7, we reach a very, very unclear middle game where, as far as I know, uh, black is doing totally fine here, but it does look very, very scary, so it does require some precise calculation here. Um, not to run into severe problems. If instead white tries d5 immediately, then black can actually capture on b5. Queen takes rook is followed by knight to b4, and here we see white is in a whole lot of trouble because the counterattack is very, very strong. Another option on move 7 is to play bishop g4 here for black, and the game could continue c4, queen e4 check. Bishop e3, we could capture on f3, let's say knight goes to d2 to try and win the piece back. Recapture, capture, and followed by a6, and maybe castle's queenside, and we get a very, very unclear middle game once again. But something black shouldn't be too unhappy with. And if you want to go for something a bit more solid, you could play the move pawn to a6 instead on move 7. And play could continue along the lines of bishop to c4, queen e4 check, bishop to e3, and maybe you play something such as queen g6, knight d2, bishop d7, or you could even play bishop d7 right away. And it might continue pawn takes. Here white has a very sneaky threat of bishop f7 and picking up the queen on e4. So we need to be careful and black can just castle queen side here and sacrifice the pawn. If white captures the pawn then we're opening a lot of lines for our pieces and I believe black has sufficient compensation here followed by knight f5, knight d4, knight e5 threats. So again, we lead to a very unclear but interesting middle game for black. So those are my recommendations against the Ponziani. It's an opening you probably won't have to face too much in your games, but it's good to have something prepared in case you do. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, consider dropping a like and subscribing if you want to see more regular content. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you on the next one.